would like to welcome everybody to our online debate on student support and higher education funding. My name is Kasia Belinska and I'm Napier Student Association President. Today is a national day of action for fair funding system and Napier Student Association is proud to take part in it. The gap between student support available and cost of living is significant enough to influence students' academic paths. NSA has recently launched a petition for fair funding system and we already have almost 500 signatures in hard and soft versions. Some of the comments that students were able to leave next to their signatures read, please help me, I won't be able to survive. I'm getting a quarter of what I got last year and I live away from home it's shocking. I am stru struggling to get by as it is and still have at least another three years of studying. If I had to pay tuition fees, I would not be able to attend university. Increasing fees is absolutely ridiculous during this recession period. Please have some mercy on the lives of students and their families. Education is the key to having a strong economy. Funding must be fairer and education open to everyone, not just those with lucrative bank accounts, and many, many more. Students feel passionate about this topic and this is why NSA has organized this debate, to give you a chance to listen to key players in higher education funding and ask them questions. I would like to invite our first guest speaker, Dr. Jenny Rees, Vice Principal of Academic Quality and Customer Service at Edinburgh Napier University. Hello, I'm Jenny Rees, Vice Principal of Academic Quality and Customer Service, and I'm delighted to have been invited to speak um, as part of this online debate. I'm delighted also that our Napier Students Association consider this matter to be of such importance that they have launched um, and facilitated this particular debate. And I'm aware that this is a very busy time for students, but hope that um, they will engage and participate in the debate. It's also a busy time politically. We have a minority SNP administration in Scotland, but more significantly we have elections looming at the Westminster Parliament next year. Um, we have just received the pre-budget report um, presented by the Chancellor Alistair Darling and we can hardly fail to know that we're in the middle of a recession um, with significant public sector borrowing um, leading to a significant squeeze on public sector funding. Um, the um, public se uh, the pre-budget report um, indicates a likely squeeze on higher education funding in England and we need to look to what the implications might be in Scotland as well. Scotland, of course, receives its funding through the Barnett formula, um, and there has been discussion in Wales about a, f a formula that is needs-based being more appropriate to Wales. Um, any change of that kind would at the very least be destabilising in Scotland and could be negative in its impact. So whichever way we look at it, there is huge pressure in Scotland in terms of the overall resources to Scotland to support um, higher education and further education and to support students studying at universities and colleges. Scotland itself also suffers from that blow to its confidence um, that comes from the um, situation in the financial sector um, and the situation that has affected the Royal Bank of Scotland and HBOS. So here we are now planning for a significant reduction in public sector funding um, and seeking to maintain um, a quality of education for our students in universities while recognising um, that there is every expectation and likelihood of real term cuts in funding from the Funding Council from 2010 and potentially enduring for a decade beyond that. Is that a fair situation to face? Not for me to answer. Um, universities play a critical role in preparing graduates for employment and meeting the skills needs of Scotland and the need for graduates in the economy is if anything growing over time so it's important that we do seek to deliver the highest quality of education that we can with the resources that we have or that we can generate 
But this clearly has to be argued for. Um, there are pressures on all parts of the public sector and there are pressures on the funds available. Um, so we are arguing for a share of a limited declining cake. In terms of what the options are, these have been well discussed and well debated um, elsewhere. Um, at present, Scotland has set its face against top-up fees. Um, it has also abolished the graduate endowment. Um, the gap with funding available to English universities who do have top-up fees can only widen, um, particularly if the cap on fees grows and certain universities um, are able to or choose to charge a higher fee than they do at present. But all of this, of course, is at institution level. Um, and while graduates have every reason to hope and expect that the education that they receive is a good one, um, of particular concern to them, of course, is the funding that enables them to study while they are at university or college. And here, of course, we see that there is not a level playing field, that the resources available to students who study part-time are different from those available to students who study full-time, that the resources available to students coming from the European Union um, who benefit from having their fees paid on their behalf, as do Scottish students, um, but do not have access to the same um, support that UK-based students have. Um, the support that is available to students studying at FE level um, is different from the students studying at higher education level in college, and the arrangements differ again as students come to university. So at the very least, it's a confusing situation for students to negotiate, um, and there isn't um, parity in terms of the expectations, sorry, expectations and entitlements that students have to support. The result of that, of course, is that students must and do work part-time, although in many cases that part-time work becomes increasingly full-time. And while on the face of it that work is a benefit because students learn many skills from their work that are a benefit to them in their later careers, and at the very least they learn to manage their time, um, we have every reason to believe and we strongly advise our students not to work for more than 15 hours a week um, because it has an impact on the time available to study and their success academically. In terms of the support that students need, um, we know from our own experience that many students have great difficulty managing their budgets, managing within the resources that they have, um, and hardship funds and a sufficiency of hardship funds is very important to enable those students who have met particular difficulties and um, to be supported to continue in their higher education. We're also aware of the particular needs that particular categories of students have, for example those students who have childcare costs to cover um, and their expectation of being able to um, cover some part of those costs to enable them to study. So in conclusion, I'm not going to say anything about my personal views as to how either universities or students should be funded, nor um, would I speak for the university in terms of any views that the university has on these matters, but I would recognise, as we all would, that there is a need for a debate on funding for both universities and for students. Um, and in that sense, I support the debate that has been initiated here and would encourage students to participate in it.